John chapter 4, let me see, read that John chapter 4, verse 48, it says, Then Jesus said unto him, Except you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. Except you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. When someone is born, immediately you are born as a baby. You are born with a virgin mind. All right? The environment you are growing in has the ability to form your belief system, your associations, the things you are exposed to, especially repeatedly. Life and the activities we do are all governed by our beliefs. And if you will not review your belief system, to make sure that you are believing the right things. You will believe wrong, you believe a lie, and you will live a lie. And a lie remains a lie, irrespective of how much it has been told repeatedly. And we're together. Lies don't become truth. You can live a lie. And right now as I'm speaking, your life is actually a reflection of everything you have believed. Whether someone is bold and courageous, or someone is weak and fearful, whether someone is nice to people or rude and arrogant, whether someone wants to associate with certain set of people or particular groups and associations or not, these are all a function of beliefs. John 4, 48, unless you see miracles, signs and wonders, you will not believe. I tell you, therefore, it means it is very difficult for people to believe certain things. If there is one thing the Bible talks about over and over and over, especially in the New Testament, is the word belief. Say belief. B E L I E V E to believe. That's a verb. Then there is belief. B E L I E F. It's a noun. We can say a belief. The belief. Then we can say to believe. I'll explain that. So the word belief is mentioned 250 times in the Bible. And to be very precise, in the New Testament. And the book of John has over 100 of it. Believe, 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 believe. And in the kingdom of God, we are destined, we are supposed to operate by faith. Say faith. Belief is like the foundation for faith. Alright? When you believe in what God says, before you see it happen, we say you have faith in God, right? Hebrews 11 verse 6. He who comes to him must first of all believe that God is who he is, who says he is, and he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So we believe before we see. And in this series, it's titled Understanding Kingdom Faith. I want to show us how to build a righteous foundation for a lasting, impactful belief system. How to build a righteous foundation for a lasting, impactful belief system. Um, I'm expecting that this will run about two, three Sundays. And whatever you hear from here is going to be your preparation for the kingdom message that I will be, you know, dishing out in the Sundays that will be coming subsequently. Praise God. Praise God. How to build a righteous foundation for a lasting, impactful belief system. So let me just give us a rundown of everything we'll be seeing. In this teaching, we will learn and understand the source of our kingdom faith. Say God. We'll also learn the implications of foundations, the origin and development slash transmission of belief systems and we'll also look at the basic definition of some concepts like belief belief and all of that why jesus wants our minds changed with the word of god right here i will emphasize the power of information the power of information the foundation for any belief is the information you receive then we shall look at the interconnections between kingdom belief miracles salvation prayer and also baptism, water baptism by immersion. There's a connection right there. Then, I will make sure that in this teaching, by the grace of God, I help you understand how to detect perversion of the truth when you have in place where false teachings and false doctrines are going on. Then, we will talk about the power of nurturing the right belief system in children. Very important. Say children. I tell you they are under attack right now. With the advent of this technology and the exposure to the internet and the social media, they're in trouble. Next thing is the consequences of a belief system, the consequences of what you believe. I tell you, people only act what they believe. 
if Saul, before his conversion, was passionately evil for the wrong thing, it was because of what he believed. Saul was really an ardent keeper of the law. He was absorbed into every aspect of Judaism. And he wanted to protect his religion. And he killed God's children, kingdom citizens, persecuted them to the fall. It will be when he had an encounter with Jesus and heard a message that instantly his belief system was readjusted and he experienced a paradigm shift and the reality of the kingdom message and kingdom living was unveiled to Paul. And Paul left from there a changed man. Hallelujah. And we also talk about the emergence of religions and other sects and movements of men threatening the kingdom intentions of God for man. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Mark 9, 23 says, Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. If you can believe. I repeat at John 4, verse 48 again. Unless people, you people see miracles, signs and wonders, Jesus told him, you will never believe. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Before we talk about belief briefly, let me talk something about foundations. Say foundations. foundations. Come on, say foundations. foundations. Say it again, foundations. foundations. Before I talk about foundations, uh, the reference I will give you is Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 to 29. Everyone is building something. Everyone is building on something. Praise God. The thread here is if your foundation is not rooted in the word of God, by the time the testings of life come, you will be in trouble. Foundations, the way they are laid, have an effect in, in fact, it has an effect on the future generation. Simple. Jesus says, anyone who hears what I say and do not do it, is likened unto a foolish builder who built his house on the sun. But he who hears and does what I have said is likened to a wise builder who built his house on the rock. Say foundations. Foundation simply means that from which other things can actually emanate. Foundation is both figurative and literal as we know. You know if you want to build a six-story building, you must be careful with the way you are laying the foundations, two of us. The foundation for a seven-story building has is not exactly like the foundation for a two-story building has two of us. When you look at the way contractors and builders actually construct, by the time they are building something, you're wondering why do they take a lot of time on the foundation laying? It should not surprise you why I'm taking my time. It's been one year and I'm repeating the same thing over and over. There's a foundation I'm laying and I want to go tall and far and higher with you. Foundations are powerful because foundations serve as the springboard for the next moves. The danger with foundation is that if a foundation is poorly laid, it will be tested in future. The scripture makes it clear. Listen and understand this good. Everything we do on earth will be tested at one point or the other. Every work of a man will be tried by fire. And if in the day of testing you find yourself wondering, it means you had a weak foundation. That is why when many who claim to be professing faith in God have dear loved ones die, you often hear confessions like, he was my all and all. What am I going to do now? I don't. It means they didn't trust God. Their foundation was rooted and they believed more in man than they believed in God. Some trust in horses. Others trust in chariots. But our trust is in the name of the Lord. That's our foundation. He who trusts in the Lord, Psalm 112, shall be like Mount Zion that cannot be shaken and cannot be moved. As the mountain is round about Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people both now and forevermore. Foundations are powerful. And many of us, and in fact all human beings on earth right now, whatever they are currently doing right now, they are building on some foundations. There is something they were exposed to growing up and they, that they learned. This is why we must carefully consider what we are learning every day and carefully consider what we want to hand to our children. If we don't like what we are learning, it's already an indication that it is dangerous for our unborn children. 
and the children that are already right now. Praise God. So if you want to correct your life and shift things and stop the wrongs and the things you don't want to see happen, what should you do? Review the foundations your belief system were built on. I am not interested in all these religious moves and all the denominational things going on. God is not a denominational God. He is the king of his kingdom. I'm not against denominations per se, no. But by the time denominationalism takes over men, because they have a particular aspect of a belief, they have built a foundation on, and they measure on it more than the collective good of God and his kingdom intentions on men, were in trouble. Lies are going on, and many have actually been rooted in these lies to the extent that they have become dangerously passionate to protect these lies. Why? Their belief is so strong, and whatever you have believed and that you have actually had it transferred to you, handed down to you, and you have lived almost the first 80 years of your life seeing those things. Is, is it easy to change it? It becomes what we call your value, and anything you value. I tell you the truth, you will do everything to protect the truth of us. This is why when you talk to people about certain things they have believed for long, which even if they were lies, they are not ready to change. Talking to you right here, someone who has had a lot of headaches, trying to minister especially healings to some people who belong to certain religious organizations and denominations. I'm not calling any specific names. They are so stubborn in their minds and they have built this rigid mindset this framework, this, this high thing, that the reality of God's word cannot penetrate into their mind. When God wants to heal me, he will heal. And I ask when. Anytime God feels like I should be healed, he will do it. When his time will come, he will do it. You see, they have been exposed to lies built on some wrong foundations other than which Jesus laid. If anything you are doing right now, be it right now the relationship foundation you are laying the educational foundation you are laying the foundation for the work you are laying if that foundation is not rooted in the kingdom principles of jesus and his righteousness standards time is coming that will test this is why some people get threatened about jobs right they know the fact the circumstances under which they got the job was a false foundation true or false foundations are powerful foundations predetermine what happens to people's lives even it has been argued by many that generational curses and bondages do not really exist. I am not going into that. But I want you to understand right here that right now you can choose to lay a righteous foundation and predetermine what you are unborn generation and the people after you believe. True of us. Let's say you come from a family where girls don't get married. That is already a foundational issue that is shaping a belief system already. If care is not taken, everyone will believe the lies. Say lies. Say I cast it out in Jesus' name. Foundations are dangerous, foundations are powerful, foundations can shape anything. When Jesus came on earth, he came on earth to lay the foundation for the kingdom rule of God through the hearts of men. He did not come to invent anything. So he established his ecclesia, his church, which is you and me who are already born again, spirit filled, living according to his dictates, to enforce this original agenda on earth right here. That foundation, he gave his word. And that word is to serve as a reference. It is what Paul the Apostle took and the other apostles. And they taught the early days church and handed to them. Before along the way, the religions and customs of men, the views of men, the desires of men cropped in and the foundation was altered and the lies gone on today as a result of this alteration. We will choose to believe the truth in Jesus' name. Foundations are powerful. In that Psalms 11, I think verse 3, right down to 5, the Bible says, If the foundations be shaken, what can even the righteous do? If the foundations are not rightly built, what can the righteous do? You can begin to see how powerful foundations are. My caution to you is, you need to go back home and review the very things you were told growing up when you had the ability to start learning things. Indoctrination and nurturing is powerful. It is what shapes a belief system in someone. Hallelujah. Indoctrinations and nurturing. Say nurturing. That means anyone can become anything soon. Believe anything and become anything. You are purely a reflection of what you believe. And I'm going to explain the definition of belief and uh, belief so that you get to understand it when the Bible talks now about belief. 
Man was designed by God to believe in something. You are supposed to live by faith. We are not supposed to live by sight. That was never God's plan. The problem is technology and scientific innovations and advancements have come in to attack their belief system. This is why it's so difficult for people today to rely on God for many things to happen. True or false? If you can believe, all things are possible. All things are possible. Therefore, belief has the ability to cause you to operate in the realm of the supernatural. True or false? True or false? That is the word right there. And in that Matthew 17, Jesus came down from the mountain. And now he's at the foot of the mountain and this man walked to him and said, I brought my son for your disciples to heal him. Because I this devil, they could not. Jesus was so disappointed. He said, oh perverse generation, how long must I be with you before you ever believe? Say perverse generation. Say perverse generation. Say perversion. Say perversion. It means distortion of the original truth. It means selling a lie, an ideology that violates the truth. It looks by the truth, but it is not it. And many today actually are believing perverse truths. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen to some introductory statements right here. God inspired me to actually collect them. Number one, everyone is believing in something. Two of us. <laughs> everyone, including me right here, someone is believing in something. Maybe God to do something for me when I will get married, when I will go to school, when I will have this master's degree, when I will have this, everyone is believing in something. So the measure of faith God has dealt to everyone, including people who are not born again. Hmm. You are only as limited as what you believe, or you are only as prosperous and limitless as what, as what you believe. True of us. The way you respond to people and react with people is a pure reflection of what you have believed all this while. That's the truth. Please, if we will understand this, our relationships with people will change and even improve. Do you know people who are so rude and arrogant? They are just living what they had believed and prepared their minds. There are some people right now who are living a lie. They think that no one can love them. They think that they are, because they were wounded a lot in the past, they can't try anything again, even relationship-wise. There are people who believe that all men right now are dogs. There are people who believe all churches are false churches except theirs. All these things are influencing the way they relate with people. If your belief is not rooted in the Word of God, the holy unadulterated Word of God, collected in these 66 books that make up the Holy Bible, if something comes there as a tradition of men, it will attack your belief. The fear here is that many of us, while growing up, we were taught first about culture, science, technology, and the physical world before we were taught about God. My challenge to you, and especially to those who will be parents very soon, make sure that your kids, if you are a kingdom parent, learn first about God before they learn about science. Next thing is, man was created by God to live by faith. Say true. Mm -hmm. Say it again, say true. Say it again, say true. Moses knows that I cannot step before Pharaoh until Pharaoh sees something that intimidates him. So God said, now I get it. You want the supernatural, you believe it, right? So let's do it. Put your hand into your cloak, into your waist, and remove. It became leprous. Now throw your staff on the floor. It turned into a serpent. Now go, show him these things. I will walk signs and wonders through you, and men will know there is a God. If you dare to just believe, all things will be possible for you. I'm telling you, talking to you right here, I'm an ardent believer in the reality of who God is. And I'm not intimidated by anything. Coming to this place to get this church started right here was a matter of faith. True of us. Nobody leaves from his comfort zone and goes to a place where gunshots and bullets are flying everywhere. But if God said it, it's going to work. God can lie. So the degree of impact and the influence you are creating is proportional. It's a reflection of how much you have believed in something. And if the source of your information Influencing your belief system is corrupted. You're in trouble. You will believe in corruption. <laughs> Praise God. Listen to this now. Belief controls men and their actions. Are you seeing that? Belief controls men and their actions. Can you talk about Muhammad anyhow where Muslims are? A dagger will enter into your waist, into your chest, into your throat. They will slit off your throat. I'm telling you, belief is powerful. The beliefs of a man, of a man rather, convicts him. Paul, like I cited earlier on, 
was passionate to protect Judaism. He believed in wrong things. And the zeal of this religious belief was so much that he could kill for it. Beliefs control the actions of men. Everyone right now is just living a reality of it. So if masquerades are dancing in church, it's just what people have grown up and they believed. The danger with belief is that the traditions can be handed down irrespective of whether the truth factor is still there or not. So in that Mark chapter 7, I think so, yeah, uh, verse 7, if I'm not making a mistake right there, Jesus actually scolded men, the Pharisees, the contemporaries of his time, which is a reflection of what's going on today. How much they have replaced the word of God with the traditions of men. Say religion. That's the onset of religion. And they believe this thing and it controls their action. So how you relate with people whom you talk to, the way you talk with people, the way you compose yourself, how you treat people is a reflection of what you believe. What do you think of people who are tall and dark? People who look, you know, handsome and beautiful. What do you believe about that? What do you believe about God? What are you really believing? If you cannot review your belief system and check with time and make sure that you're on course with God, your action may be just a reflection of what you have allowed to actually control your subconscious mind. Now let, listen to this other statement. Any belief in a supernatural deity propagating anti-kingdom activities is not of God. Now a deity is a generic term that describes a supernatural being that has the power to control things. I don't want to just put God into that lower realm. Because God is the only supreme commander of the entire universe. That's what I believe alone. See? But people believe in some things that control their behavior, and their behavior does not reflect what the Bible says. True or false? And they call those things churches. This Angambe has religious sects and movements. And the shocking thing is that majority, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1 to 2, are giving heed to these doctrines of devils and lying spirits. And majority are believing in because people are refused to give attention to the authentic truth. The Holy Bible. Hmm. Daily, information bombards our minds to renew, to help us renew or discard our beliefs. True of us. The good news about belief is that it is progressive and beliefs are subject to changes the more new information is received. So the more you learn about God, the more even some old things you used to believe, you will stop it. Beware of culture. Beware of culture. Beware of the cultures of men. Culture has the ability to subdue the belief system about God. Praise God. The next thing is that belief is progressive and any belief not capable of standing the test of time is not worth your commitments to. Say belief is progressive. And any belief, right? Listen to that statement again. Belief is progressive and any belief not capable of standing the test of time is not worth your commitment to. If you cannot trust God when challenges come, we can question what you have been learning about him. This is why we want you to study to know the word. This is why we want you to come and seek for instructions. This is why I teach for long hours. I want to make sure that your spirit man is loaded with the scriptures, touching every aspect of life. Majority of the people who reach out to me for prayer belong to other denominations. Minute and minute. Including as recent as this morning, praying for someone on phone who was on prolonged level since Friday. <laughs> they have pastors, they have fathers, they have priests or whoever is leading them. The question I often ask is, why is it that people from a particular denomination keep pursuing all right, interest in the others? Why can't they just switch? Why would you be in a place that is not helping, it's suffocating you, and you want help from other places? Say prostitution. Come on, say prostitution. You are afraid? <laughs> so this is, something is not right. Something is not right, therefore. So if you are believing in something that is not able to sustain you and stand the test of time, you are believing wrong things. It's time to change. You are responsible for that as an adult. As an adult. Why be in a church where you are just weak and weakly and life bombards you with challenges and you live, you, I mean, you just live stranded and one, I mean, wandering. It's not supposed to be. Cultures are a reflection of belief systems and the traditions of men. That's a good statement right there. I can talk about this over and over. When men believe in something, guess what? They are going to start portraying that inner transformation through the ideas they got, in the way they dress, in the way they talk, in the associations they keep, in the way they do things, in what they eat, in the language they speak, in how they get married, in how they do particular activities. 
So cultures are the reflections of the beliefs and the traditions of men. In other words, if you are not careful, therefore, with what you call your culture, so people make some silly things, God's children. My culture, my identity. Have you ever heard that? You have one identity in Christ. That's it. That's a hard one, right? <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Having said these statements, I want you to understand that Jesus' target, before I get into the definition of belief and belief, I want you to understand that in Jesus' target, in his teachings, he wanted the mind of man to be protected. Praise God. He wanted your mind to be protected. When you hear the word repent, 